three. My name is Mike Foster, the Entrepreneur's Mentor, and welcome to my interview series, A Zoom With. Now you'll know that I regularly share my thoughts through my video snippets, which are my thoughts to help you start, develop, and grow your own business. But this video series is about introducing you to trusted experts who will share their tips and their thoughts with you, with again to help you develop your business. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Fletcher of Mushroom Souffle. Sarah creates social media magic for businesses with social media strategy, mentoring, and training. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for committing some of your valuable time to share some thoughts with us. If you may, first of all, just introduce yourself a bit more about you and a bit about your business, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Sarah Fletcher. I have been mushroom soup for 11 years. I'm based in Tame, Oxfordshire, but it doesn't matter where my clients are because everything that we do can be done virtually. Um, so as you said, um, I train and, and mentor and that's small business owners and their teams and I want them to be able to use social media authentically, confidently and profitably and you know just make the most of their time. I love just getting really deep into it, really understanding my client and their business. Um, I ask a lot of questions, ask anyone that's ever worked with me before. Um, and it's for me, it's all about listening and really understanding about them so I know what they want to achieve, where they want to go with it. Um, and I have one major rule, which is no question is a silly question. Because I know when, especially when it comes to social media, some people are like, oh, I don't quite understand, but they, you know, we find it hard sometimes to admit that we don't know stuff. Um, so it's really making them feel seen and heard. And my favorite part of it all is definitely brainstorming content and creating it with them. Nice, I like that, I like that. So I guess my first question is, is topical because of um, being through this uh, pandemic and lockdown, et cetera. Have you found that social media has changed in any way during this period? Um, yes, it's changed quite a lot. Uh, use of social media has gone up 60% since all of this started. So obviously, some people, not everyone, have had less to do. They've been restricted at home. There's been a lot more kind of the aimless news feed scroll, but equally people searching for solutions for the challenges that they're suddenly encountering. Um, also, the different networks have sped up launching a lot of their new features that were planned for later on in the year, but then they've realized that, you know, actually now this would really give businesses the opportunity to um, benefit and push forward with them. And I've also seen an increase in business owners whose their online communities probably weren't their priority before, but they've realized now that it needs to be a really strong, solid pillar of their marketing strategy. And so they're really looking to kind of get to, get to grips with it and make it work. Yeah, so that's great insight. Um, so in terms of what do you, what would you recommend businesses should be doing right now with their social media? Um, stay visible. That is the biggest thing. I think a lot, uh, quite a few businesses went quiet when this kicked off because obviously they were dealing with a lot. But during hard times, the, the one thing that we have to keep doing is being visible, uh, marketing, still building those relationships so that people remember us and know that we're still here. Um, talk directly to their audience. Understanding what their challenges and their situations are at the moment. I think a lot of people's priorities are going to have changed in the last um, 10 weeks. And it's their desires that, that, that are changed, their priorities, the solutions that they want. Um, and the people also want open communication. So actually being on social media and you know, doing all of this means people can talk back to you so much easier. And for now, that's what we really need. It's about making ourselves accessible. That's really vital. And something that everyone really should have been doing before anyway, it's about being a respected voice in terms of being the expert in your area. And we, we, you know, we want to be that, whether we're 
in the current situation of lockdown or whether we're not it's you know, that, that's when people start to look up to you and realize that you're the person that can help them again really good tips and particularly around visibility and being the, the sort of expert voice so how would how would a business necessarily do that how would they approach that um, <laughs> It sounds really boring and I'm sorry, they've got to do their homework. So I think quite often it's too easy just to do kind of a, a generic, oh, how are people at the moment? But actually get in, get in deep to it, re-look at your, your ideal customer, drill down into how this has affected them and understand how that's changed, how, what they need to know, how they work, what potential this has on the future of their business and how, how do they feel about things because obviously buying is an emotional decision so if we if we don't have that right at the moment um obviously what we don't want to do is come across as spammy or taking advantage of the situation you know it's about being really genuine um, and I, I like to call it it's a bit like you've got a load of squirrels at a rave but now's the time to line them up like ducks in a row. And I think that's how a lot of people were with social media to start with. Um, and getting in place a consistent content strategy is really important. Yeah, I love, I, I love the thing about consistency. I know that's a piece that you've shared before, before with me. I've, I've got, I guess, the burning question that I guess anybody who's watching this video is probably likely to be asking. So, is there something that you see working without fail every time? Yes, there is. It's called personality. <laughs> so, and, and this is genuinely, this, this wins hands down every single time. So being 50 shades of beige will kill your business. And I think some people can be a little bit nervous about putting their head above the parapet actually standing out from other people but actually that's why people choose to buy from us because they connect with something they love how you are you know they know they're going to get a certain level of service and interaction with you and having the confidence to put that personality out there without fear of how other people are going to judge you all the people who are doing well on social media have got that personality they're saying what they think they're they've got an opinion they're being the expert and it doesn't matter whether it's you know they're scientific or they're fun and chatty or do you know I mean slightly introverted and really love going into detail it's about the people that you're going to attract the people that are really going to love to work with you and we've all got our own style that resonates with people as well um so yeah ultimately it's just really letting that come to the front and yes that is also allowed on linkedin despite what some people say um so i, I that, that's uh, definitely one thing i always work with on my clients and that's are you willing to put that out front and let the personality really come through so that people can can get to grips with it because at some point when they work with you they're going to get the real you anyway <laughs> Mm -hmm. so you want that to be really kind of authentic and cohesive yes yeah, quite interesting I, I, I say this to my clients is that if you portray yourself in one way on your social media your marketing and then you go and sit in front of somebody and you're a totally different person ultimately the person's confused and they spin out because they don't know who, now who they're speaking to ultimately. it just won't gel. so a, a bit of a related question then so if businesses want to make their social media much more effective, what should they be doing? If they're already doing the things that I've talked about, but something isn't quite working, then actually what they need to do is take a step back from it and look at it with fresh eyes. What needs tweaking? The one thing, something that will also cause us massive injury in doing social media is we get into comfort zones and habits that actually aren't serving us. Oh, that's easy, I'll just keep turning that out. So it's about really understanding that, you know, is your social media really reflecting the positioning of your business? Is it really 
connecting with the emotions of your target ideal client. And it is, it's, you know, if, you ha if you have to go back and redo things, then absolutely that's what do. Focus on your clients, what do they need to hear? Um, and, and focus on maybe like the three top challenges that are really holding them back. Because I think sometimes as well, we want to help them with everything. So we overload them with information and people don't have the attention span for that. We need one thing that's gonna grab them and to keep our messages really honed. So that, that's what I would do. I, I would take a step back, reassess it all, go, um, ha, you know, how can you hone it even further? Um, but equally, talk to me or another social media person that they really respect and get direction, ideas, learn some new tips and techniques uh, and see how they can push it. Always, there's an, always another level that you can take it up to. Thanks, Sarah. Um, well, you know me, I love my social media. Um, so actually, I could talk to you all day about social media. Um, unfortunately, we won't have the time to do that. But if people want to engage with you, they want to um, get some of your expert advice, how could they do that? What is a website? I think you do a cafe of some sort. Um, so I have a website, mushroom-souffle.co.uk. Uh, my Facebook group uh, is a good place to be for lots of information and discussions. That's Sarah's Social Cake. And then I do a co-working space every Thursday morning uh, called Sarah's Social Cafe, where it's over Zoom and it's, it's rock up. We have a conversation, but equally we open our laptops, we get stuff done and it's all all about you know finding the time to do the work that we need to so that we can get the results in. Fantastic thank you and I, I certainly recommend that if you're looking not just for ideas but to get things done have that conversation with with Sarah uh, she's got those tools and those uh, processes to help you do that so Sarah thank you for spending that short bit of time with us I know it's a valuable time to you I know you're busy helping your clients do that social media bit that you talk about so again thanks for, you, for sharing your time thanks for sharing your tips and your thoughts with us. Oh, thank you for asking me. I've enjoyed it. Thank you. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and get notified each time I publish a new interview. And I'll see you next time for a Zoom with whoever's next. <laughs>